Today, I'm going to share with you five time-tested strategies for cracking the code of quantitative comparison. So without further delay, let's get started. So a few notes before we begin. The strategies I'm about to show you will completely change how you tackle the GRE, so make sure you pay attention. And don't worry about taking notes. I'll tell you how you can get this presentation and all of my notes at the end of the workshop. So please stick around until the very end. We also have a bonus strategy guide on how to efficiently study for the GRE that I'll share with you at the very end. Now here is my promise to you. You'll get step-by-step -step tactics on conquering the hardest QC problems. You'll learn how to avoid the biggest traps that lead most students to struggle with the GRE. And finally, why you don't need to be a math genius to score well. In fact, you'll be surprised at how easy it is using the strategies you're about to learn. Now you might wonder who I am, so let me talk a bit about myself first. My name is Corey and I'm the GRE P Math Instructor for Prep Scholar. I graduated summa cum laude with a Bachelor's of Science in Chemical Engineering from Virginia Tech before doing PhD level research at MIT. Getting into MIT wasn't easy, but my perfect GRE quant score definitely helped my application stand out over the thousands of applicants they reviewed. I've taught the GRE for almost a decade and it never ceases to amaze me how people assume that someone must be a perfect math student to get a great GRE score. Little do they know there are lots of secrets, tricks, and tips that can help you score very well on the GRE. It's just a matter of learning the right tactics and shortcuts that will guide you to success. And this is why I joined Prep Scholar. I met with Alan and Fred, alumni from Harvard and MIT. They believed in smart preparation through customized learning and simplifying questions so that everyone, even those without a math background, can conquer the GRE. We were founded in 2013 in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and we're top 1% instructors and passionate educators. We don't believe in one-size-fits-all test prep. Instead, we combine expert teaching with machine language algorithms to guide everyone to a great score. Now that you know a bit about me, let's talk about quantitative comparison. So why is QC important after all? Well, the GRE math section has around 15 quantitative comparison questions. And since the entire GRE math section has only 40 questions, QC is nearly 40% of GRE math. This means that if you do better on QC, you can significantly improve your GRE math score. In fact, we've seen students increasing their GRE score by four to eight points after conquering QC. This is huge. A four to eight point increase can be the difference between a 70th percentile and 90th percentile on the GRE. And the difference between not getting into your safety grad program to having a real shot at your dream grad program. Now, I know what you're thinking. Really, Corey, just one short workshop and just like magic, I'm a perfect math student. Well, trust me, I wouldn't believe that either. But if you think about it, that's not what we're really doing here. You don't need to be a perfect math student to get these quantitative comparison questions correct. You need to be a smart GRE test taker, and I will teach you how. Let's start by going over what is quantitative comparison. There are GRE math questions where we compare the values of two quantities. The four possible answer choices for any quantitative comparison question are A, quantity A is greater, B, quantity B is greater, C, the two quantities are equal, D, the relationship cannot be determined from the information given. Now let's walk through this easy example to help you understand quantitative comparison. Now here's the first thing you need to know. For the answers, only choose answers A, B, or C if the corresponding statement is always true, no exceptions. If you can think of just one situation where the statement is not true, 
We can't choose that answer. Now, here's the next thing that you need to know. You need to figure out how to simplify the question. In this case, A and B are simply easy operations of only integers. So to simplify, we just calculate the answers. Your quantity A is 12 and quantity B is 8. Now, since 12 is always greater than 8, quantity A is always greater, so the right answer must be A. Now that you know what quantitative comparison is, let's learn the five strategies to tackle quantitative comparison. These strategies will teach you to become a smarter GRE test taker by simplifying the questions to find the correct answer without directly solving the questions, which can be very difficult and time consuming. I'm going to first quickly introduce you the strategies, then I'll go over how to apply them and when to apply them using real GRE questions. The first strategy is add. The strategy is used when we have inequalities involved in quantitative comparison. The second strategy is cancel. This strategy is used to simplify quantities A and B by removing duplicate terms. The third strategy is sign. This strategy will show you how you can replace a variable with a plus or minus sign to quickly get to an answer without having to completely solve for the variable. The fourth strategy is equate. This strategy will simplify fractions that initially look very different from each other and seem very hard to solve. And last but not least, the fifth strategy is multiply. I'll show you how to simplify questions through multiplication, cutting in half what you need to look at. So that's it. Now let's practice these strategies on some of the hardest quantitative comparison problems out there. Ready? And let's go. Example number one. This question gives us two inequalities that have three variables. We then want to compare r to one to see which is greater. So this question looks kind of difficult, right? <laughs> yep, it definitely does for many reasons. Three variables is like doing three problems at once. Then add in two inequalities, and it's easy to start feeling overwhelmed. So many students will start randomly choosing numbers to plug in. They hope that if they just start writing stuff down, the answer will magically appear. And if you're honest with yourself, you might be thinking of numbers to start plugging in too, right? Now, if you plug in numbers long enough, you'll probably eventually find the right answer, but we don't have a lot of time with the jury. So how can we solve this complex question quickly? We can solve it by using the five strategies I just mentioned to drastically simplify this question. Since you see inequalities in this question, as we mentioned before, you should consider using the add strategy to simplify this question. So what are we adding? Glad you asked. Well, we are going to add the two inequalities together by aligning them vertically and then adding them straight down, just like how we first learned addition as kids. So, as you see here, when we add these two inequalities together, we end up with one inequality instead of two. R plus S plus T is greater than S plus T plus one. So that's a lot better. We went from having two inequalities to now having only one inequality by using the add strategy. But we still have three variables, right? R, S, and T. So how can we simplify it? further? Well, we can use the cancel strategy by removing duplicate terms on both sides of the inequality. We see here that S and T appear on both sides, so then we can just cancel them out. After canceling them out, we now see that our inequality has become just R is greater than 1. We have one inequality with only one variable. And from this inequality, it's clear that r is always greater than one. And since r is quantity a and one is quantity b, quantity a must always be greater than quantity b. So the right answer is a. Now just stop for a second and look at how that worked out. We started with this complicated set of two inequalities with three variables, then with two short easy steps. We turned it into one inequality and one variable. So remember, add and cancel is a very common combination to quickly solve 
inequalities. Now let's move on to another advanced GRE question. Example number two. We have an inequality and want to compare z minus x to z plus y. Looks complicated, right? Three inequality symbols, three variables, and quantity a and b each have two variables. This is a very bad question for randomly choosing numbers to plug in. You'll always have some uncertainty about which numbers to use. Not to mention it's time consuming and kind of mentally draining as well. Plus, answer D is a catch-all for when we get more than one correct answer from A, B, and C. But if you plug in numbers, you'll have to do it multiple times, and it's hard to know how many times you should do this. So let's be smart about this. We will use the five strategies to simplify this question. Since we only have one row of inequalities, we won't use the add technique here. However, we see that both quantity A and quantity B had the variable z. This tells us that we should use the cancel technique to simplify. So here we see z on both sides, so we just subtract z from each side. So we've moved from two variables in each quantity to just one variable in each quantity. Negative x for quantity a and y for quantity b. So to further solve, let's look at the problem again. We see that x, y, and z are all less than zero. This tells us that all three variables are negative numbers. In situations where we know the sign of the variables, in this case, they're all negative signs, we can deploy the sign method to simplify. Now, here's how the sign method works. If you know a variable must be negative, plug in the negative sign for it. If you know a variable must be positive, plug in the positive sign for it. So, so we know that both x and y here must be negative, we plug in the negative sign for them both. After switching the variables into signs, we see that quantity A is the product of two negative numbers, so it must be positive, and quantity B must be negative. We've changed a complicated looking question into a plus sign for quantity A and a minus sign for quantity B. No matter your math skill level, you'll always remember positives are greater than negatives. So the right answer must be A, that quantity A is greater. So remember that we can use the cancel and sign to simplify questions. Example number three, we have an inequality and then we're comparing two fairly complicated looking fractions with variables on top and bottom for quantity A and B. Plugging in numbers would be time consuming, and require lots of calculations, we don't want that. So let's be smart and use the five strategies to simplify this question. It's hard comparing fractions when both their tops and bottoms are different. This is a hint that we can simplify by making one of them the same. The way only one of them changes so that we can have one thing changing instead of two. To make fractions more similar, I'll introduce another method here, the equate method. When comparing two fractions, the equate method is often used because you want to make either the tops look the same or the bottoms look the same. In this example, the tops are pretty close to each other. So let's make them the same. We equate them by multiplying quantity b by negative one over negative one. So the top becomes x just like quantity a. Now we have x over x plus one as quantity a and x over x minus one as quantity b. When comparing two positive fractions with the same numerator, we can just ignore the numerator. So by focusing just on the denominator, we can see that x plus one is more than x minus one. So it's like comparing one over a big number to one over a small number. And with positive fractions, the one with the smaller denominator or x minus one is greater. So the answer is B, quantity B is greater. Remember, when you have two different looking fractions, try simplifying using the equate method to make either the tops or the bottoms the same. All right, let's do one last example here. Example number four. Here we compare one over X 
to x plus 1 over x squared. Like before, this looks kind of complicated too. We have two different looking fractions. Tops are different and the bottoms are different. If we start plugging in numbers, we'll have to do it multiple times till we're satisfied that we can't get more than one answer from A, B, and C. So what should we do? You guessed it, the five strategies to simplify. We could actually use the equate method to solve this question, but I want to teach you another new method, the multiply method. The equate method makes either the tops or the bottoms the same. The multiply method gets rid of the bottom of the fraction completely. Fractions have two parts, the top and the bottom, so four total parts here between the two quantities. We can multiply both fractions by the biggest denominator to get rid of the bottoms of the fractions. So let's multiply both fractions by x squared. Doing so, we get quantity A is x and quantity B is x plus 1. Since quantity B has the same thing as quantity A with an extra plus 1, then quantity B must be bigger. The answer is therefore B. So you just learned how to simplify with the multiply method. Just multiply both quantities by something that gets rid of the denominators of the fractions. So instead of comparing four terms, we're comparing two terms. Simplify questions and you'll improve your GRE math score. Let's quickly recap the five strategies we, we learn for simplifying quantitative comparison questions. First, we learn to simplify by adding. Use this when you seem more than one inequality in a QC question. Add two inequalities together to, to simplify the question to one inequality. Second, we learn how to cancel to get rid of duplicate terms. If we see the same thing added to both quantities, then we just cancel them out. Third, we learn to use signs for variables. If we know the sign of the variable, plug in a plus or minus sign for a positive or negative variable to simplify the question. Fourth, we learn how to use equate with fractions. When we have two fractions that look very different, we can simplify by making the bottoms or tops the same. Finally, we learn how to multiply to reduce the number of terms. Two fractions will have four total terms. So multiply by the biggest denominator to get rid of the bottoms of the fractions and reduce the terms to two. You should think of these strategies as five tools in your GRE tool belt. Many questions will need more than one of them to solve, and some questions can be solved in multiple ways. The key is practicing extra questions and it'll become second nature, recognizing when a strategy will be helpful. It's just like having a hammer and a screwdriver in your tool belt. You'll recognize some questions having screws and you'll pull out your math screwdriver per se, or questions you'll recognize as having a nail and reach for your hammer. With some practice, I promise these strategies will become ingrained in your mind and you'll better understand how to master GRE quantitative comparison by simplifying questions.